Hello everyone. In this session, we want to take a look at primary and secondary zones. A primary zone is a zone that is stored locally as a zone file on a DNS server that is not a domain controller. You would remember in previous sessions looking at DNS, we talked about an Active Directory Integrated Zone. And an Active Directory Integrated Zone would be a zone that is installed on a domain controller. And that data in that zone replicates automatically to the other domain controllers within your organization. Not so if you install DNS on a member server. If you install DNS on a member server, meaning there's no Active Directory integration there, that zone file is stored locally. That database file is stored locally. And that database needs to be replicated. And the only way that that database is going to be replicated is if we install DNS on a second server and we create what we call a secondary zone. This secondary zone has a copy of that DNS database that's on the primary DNS server. For the secondary zone, that data is read-only. By read-only, we mean that the data cannot be updated on the secondary DNS server. For example, if a record were added to the primary DNS server, that record would be updated in that DNS database. Not so with the secondary DNS server. What would happen is that database file would have to be pushed over to the secondary DNS server. We do have a push-pull method. The data can be pushed to the secondary DNS server, or the secondary DNS server can pull that DNS data. But remember that the secondary DNS server does not update information automatically. That only happens on the primary DNS server. Typically, adding a secondary DNS server to a zone involves three steps. On the primary DNS server here to the left, what we need to do is to add that secondary DNS server. This would be our prospective um, secondary DNS server to the list of name servers that are authoritative for that zone. And we want to take a look to see how we will add the prospective secondary DNS server to the list of name servers that are authoritative for the zone. The second step is on the primary DNS server, we want to verify that the transfer settings for the zone permit that zone to be transferred to the prospective secondary DNS server. And we can configure that on the properties of the DNS zone. Thirdly, on the prospective DNS server, we need to add the zone. Now we're going to go through those steps. We're going to go through the first step. And the first step is that on the primary DNS server, we need to add the prospective secondary DNS server to the list of name servers that are authoritative for the domain. So we're going to click on Tools, DNS. We want to expand the forward lookup zone and we want to double click on the zone addatom.com. Then we're going to right click on the zone and click on properties. We want to click on the name server tag and we want to click add. 
The server that we want to add to be our prospective secondary DNS server is London Server 1. So we're going to type London Server 1 and we have to type the fully qualified domain name. So L O N hyphen server one S V R dot add a term dot com. That gives us our fully qualified name. The next thing we want to do is to type the IP address. So we're going to click here to type the IP address. And the IP address of that prospective DNS server, London Server 1, is 172.16.0.21. And we want to click on Resolve. And we want to go ahead and click on OK. So we have added that prospective secondary DNS server to the list of name servers that are authoritative for the zone. Our second task is to verify the transfer settings for the zone. So we're going to right click on the zone, click on properties, and we're going to click on zone transfers. So our job here is to make sure that the settings allow us to transfer the zone from the primary DNS server so the secondary DNS server. So the first thing we want to do is to click Allow Zone Transfer. Then we have some choices. If we say to any server, then the DNS server, the secondary DNS server, will be part of that any server. Or we could say only to servers listed on the name servers tab. We could do that because we already listed London Server 1 on the Name Server tab. Or we could say only to the following servers, and we could actually type the address and the name of the server that we want the zone to be transferred to. We can here go with any server because we only have one secondary server here. So we want to go ahead and say OK. So that is how we would verify that transfer. Our third step is we now have to go to that second server, London Server 1, and we have to add the zone as a secondary zone. So we're about to do that. We're now in the zone properties of the secondary server and we would have looked at creating primary zones before all we need to do is to right click on the forward lookup zone and click on new zone and we're going to get the new zone wizard you saw it when we did our primary zone you saw it when we did our stub zone but what we want here is a secondary zone so we're going to click on secondary and let's look at the description here Secondary zone creates a copy of a zone that exists on another server. So our zone, remember, exists on DC1. This option helps balance the processing load of primary servers and provides for tolerance. So we want to click on Next. And we want to type the name of the new zone. The name specifies the portion of the DNS namespace for which this server is authoritative. So let's just call this secondary, for our purposes here, zone. So, just for our lab purposes. 
we want to click on next and what you have here is you actually have to specify the DNS servers from which you want to copy the zone so you're copying the zone from London DC 1 so you actually have to type the IP address or the server fully qualified name London DC 1 dot add a term dot com so this is your this would be a list of your master servers from which you want to copy the zone And the servers are contacted in the order in which they are listed. After you have typed the name or the IP address, you next have to click next to get to the new zone wizard. And you can see here you have successfully completed the new zone wizard and you specified the following. So that is the third step that we have to do in adding the secondary DNS server on which the zone will be transferred to. We want to click on finish to complete the wizard. And we have a secondary zone. There's one other setting that we want to look at here that deals with the zone transfer. So we're going to go back to the zone transfer. We're going to right click on the zone and we're going to click on properties and zone transfer. The setting that we want to look at is notify. And this setting specifies the secondary server to be, notif to be notified of zone updates. So that when there is an update to the primary zone, this configuration here, notify, will help us notify the secondary DNS server that a change has been made. Let's click on notify. And you have to make sure that you have here automatically notify. And you have a choice here. You can notify servers listed on the name servers tab, which we, we had put the DNS server on the name servers tab, or you can actually click here and add the IP address of the servers, which would be the secondary DNS servers that you want to notify. So again, to automatically notify secondary servers when the zone changes, you must make sure that you have this tick here by automatically notify and you can choose either servers listed on the name servers tab or you can type the name or the IP address of that secondary server. To recap, the secondary DNS server has a secondary zone that is a read-only copy of the primary zone. The primary zone can be configured to push that DNS zone data to the primary, to the secondary DNS zone. And we saw just now that we were able to go into zone transfer and click on notify so that when a change is made on the primary DNS server, the secondary DNS server will be notified of that change. And bear in mind 
that the primary DNS zone and the secondary DNS zone scenario is different from the Active Directory Integrated DNS zone where the zone data is replicated automatically with the rest of the data. And this is so because it is an Active Directory Integrated zone. This is the end of our session, and I want to thank you for listening.